Greyhound urinary tract infection. Symptoms. Bye-bye UTI seven-day boot camp day one. Gail here on day one of a seven-day boot camp to make your Greyhound UTI free. I'm going to help you figure out if your Greyhound or other dog has a UTI and what to do next. So stick around. If you're new to the Greyhound Home Care channel, subscribe now and tap the bell so I can get the latest Greyhound news to you first, like this one-of-a-kind UTI prevention boot camp. It can be pretty annoying when your Greyhound has a huge drink, cries to go out, can't make up his mind to go while he's out there, and then comes back in without doing anything. And then he repeats the whole cycle. But this is often a symptom. It's disturbing to find piddle puddles on your floor. But this is often a symptom. And it's shocking to see blood in your dog's pee. But this is often a symptom, and even just one of these symptoms can mean your greyhound has a UTI, which means it's time to call the vet. If it's the middle of the night, make that call first thing in the morning and get your pup seen that day. The sooner the better. Why? Because he's miserable and so are you. The cleanup's awful. Unlike fine wine, this is not going to get better with age. And from here, it can grow into a larger, more dangerous, harder to treat infection. Let's take a look at what's happening to your dog. He's gotten some harmful bacteria into his urinary system. Usually this bacteria is the E. coli type, you know, the kind that comes from your dog's number two. Um, you know, he tries to clean himself up back there and eh, sometimes things can get a little sloppy. Anyway, the bacteria is irritating the tube where his pee needs to pass through, which is a surprisingly small opening to begin with. And now it's getting inflamed and swelling up and making it even harder for him to pee and flush out that bacteria. That's why you may see your dog's pee coming out in little squirts or droplets instead of that usual robust stream. With no place to go, your greyhound's urinary tract becomes like a petri dish, breeding and growing even more irritating bacteria. The cycle continues, and as you can now see, is on a downward spiral from here. The infection can go through his whole urinary tract, the tubes, the bladder, and his kidneys. So do this when your dog starts showing any of the symptoms. First, please be kind. I know you feel upset. You feel horrible. There may be a knee-jerk reaction that he's being a bad dog, but if you show any kind of irritation or disapproval, you're just going to make it worse. You're going to break your dog's trust in you, and then he's just going to go sneak off into a corner and do his little piddles there. And you'll be trying to resolve what you think is a behavior problem while your dog is getting progressively sicker. Now, your vet is going to want a pee sample, so stick around to see the easy way to do that. And then follow through with a full course of antibiotics that the vet's going to give you. The easiest way to get that pee sample is to find a container with a tight-fitting lid. Tape the container onto a stick and then move it under your dog at the uh, critical moment. Snap that lid on the container right away or things can get messy. When you get home, if you want, you can use a pH strip to help confirm your suspicions. I know this sounds very medical, but these are really very cheap and very easy to get from any drugstore. And once you buy them, you get like a hundred at a time, you have them for forever. The UTI bacteria tries to neutralize disease-fighting acid in your dog's pee, creating a high reading. That would be over 7. The basic rule about using pH strips with dogs is anything between 6 and 7 is good. Usually about 6.2, 6.5, somewhere in there is normal. Anything below 6, that's a warning sign. Anything above 7, also a warning sign. Lily's sample is looking good. So folks, remember these signs. Trouble peeing, peeing indoors, or blood in the pee. Greyhound urinary tract infection, hydration. Bye-bye UTI seven-day boot camp day two. The end of your Greyhound's UTI misery could be as close as this, and it's absolutely free of charge. But a lot of Greyhounds are poor drinkers. Let's look at three ways to get your Greyhound to drink more, including how to get an extra pint, uh, not that kind of pint, an extra pint of water into him every day. In following the standard advice to always leave water out for your dog, it's easy to forget to change that water and keep the bowl clean, especially if your greyhound's a poor drinker so the bowl always looks like it's freshly filled when it's really just barely touched. The key to getting your greyhound to drink more water is to know when he wants it and how he likes it, and then follow through every single day. Here are three ways to do that. First, add one cup of water to your greyhound's food twice a day. It might look sloppy and gross, but believe me, your greyhound will not mind. If he does mind at first and balks at eating it, don't give up. He'll be back at the next mealtime. Or you can just put it away and try again in an hour. If you do so, be sure to loosen the food up with a spoon so he can get at it more easily. 
In cold weather, zap the water in the microwave for about 20 seconds. When you serve the food, tip the bowl a little. Some greyhounds will be put off by a layer of food that's stuck fast to the bottom of the bowl and decide that it's just not worth the effort. Not that they're lazy or anything. Second, bowl hygiene is huge. Uh, not that bowl. According to the Sanitation Foundation, your dog's bowls rank fourth for the germiest surface in your home. Never use plastic bowls. Over time, they can develop scratches which harbor bacteria. This bacteria is very hard to clean out completely and can make your dog sick. This includes bacteria that you can't see, as well as those that you can, such as biofilm, the clear slime you might feel in the bottom of your dog's water bowl. Biofilm contains a crazy amount of nasty germs that are suspected in a lot of illness in people as well as pets. It can also release toxins into the air, which can make the whole family sick. At the very least, biofilm has a rotten smell. You might not catch it, but your dog can, and it can make him pretty uninterested in drinking from that bowl. Then there's this gross pink stuff, serratia, marsicins, which can cause infection as well as pneumonia in your dog. Your dog's bowl can also breed mold, yeast, salmonella, and E. coli, which as you know now is the most common culprit in UTIs. Change your dog's water frequently, at least every couple of hours. Be sure the bowl is clean. Every time you change your dog's water, be sure to give the bowl a good rinse. Every night, wash all dog bowls thoroughly. My first choice for this job is to put it through the dishwasher using the sanitized setting. No dishwasher? Then wash the bowls using hot soapy water. Rinse very thoroughly and dry well. I've heard that some dogs dislike drinking water because they can taste the soap that was used to clean the bowl. If you think this may be the case for your dog, there are a few things you might try. Avoid applying soap directly to the bowl or the sponge. A little soap really does go a long way. Try a small amount of soap diluted in water. You can try using a scent-free dish soap. Oh, and that sponge? According to the Sanitation Foundation, that is the number one germiest place in your home. It's a good idea to have a separate sponge that you use just for dog's bowls. You can keep that sponge separate by labeling it with a Sharpie. Personally, I avoid this entire problem by making these cute little cloths to clean my kitchen. They dry between uses, I throw them into the laundry at the end of the day, and I start fresh with a clean one every morning. Another thing you'll need to do is go around your yard and empty any sources of standing water. Dogs love to drink out of these, and the water is really filthy. Besides, they're mosquito breeders, and you don't want that. It's important to remember to do this after every rain. If you water your lawn or use sprinklers, always check after your watering is done for standing water which may have collected. It can really sneak up on you. Oh, and you want to keep the lid closed on the porcelain font. Third, use ice. In warm weather, your dog will need even more water. A good way to make sure he gets this is to give him some ice in a container that makes it easy for him to get at it. Ice is also good for keeping your dog's water fresh and clean on hot days. Here's how you can make your dog a little electrolyte ice treat. Please don't give your dog human electrolyte drinks like Gatorade. According to an article from cuteness.com, electrolyte recipes for dogs contain higher sugar to sodium ratios than electrolyte solutions for people, as dogs don't lose sodium as quickly as we do. Country vet Catherine Walker recommends a solution of one quart water, one tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. But since studies show that dogs consume three times as much water if it's chicken flavored, we can modify this and replace that teaspoon of salt with a teaspoon of chicken broth powder. Pour into ice cube trays or any cute silicone molds you happen to have, freeze, and bag up for your pet to enjoy on hot summer days. Greyhound Urinary Tract Infection Movement Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp Day 3 your greyhound's favorite activity, and believe it or not, I wasn't talking about that activity. That's better. Your greyhound's favorite activity can make him more prone to UTIs, so we're going to explore simple ways to cut that risk way down. So stick around for day three of the Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp. Remember that bacteria we were talking about yesterday? Well, it's a lot like your greyhound. It doesn't like to be disturbed. So here's the secret sauce for day three of the Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp. Don't let that bacteria rent space in your greyhound's urinary tract. You've got to shake it up, and here are the four easiest ways to do it. The first you've probably already guessed. Just walking around will give that bacteria a bumpy ride so it doesn't get too comfortable in your dog's system. But second, you want that walking around to be on a regular schedule so they can empty out the bladder. 
Greyhounds can seem like camels the way they can hold it, but just because they can doesn't mean that they should. Some of you are probably saying that your greyhounds hold it 8 to 10 hours every day while you're at work with no problem. And if that's the case, well, I'm glad you're here anyway so you can learn more about symptoms and prevention. Often, as a greyhound gets older, it becomes necessary to shorten the length of time between those potty breaks. Doing this will keep your greyhound healthier overall and can also prevent accidents. Third, be patient and make sure your greyhound empties his bladder completely every time. Be very careful never to distract your dog when he's uh, doing his business, whether it's by pulling him along to continue his walk or by calling him back to the house. If you notice, your greyhound may have a habit of standing still after he looks like he's finished doing his business, and then he'll push out a little bit more pee. If that pee is left behind in his bladder, it can culture a lot of bacteria. You'd be surprised how often this small oversight is at the root of a full-blown UTI. Fourth, here's one that can really sneak up on you. Make sure your greyhound is changing positions often enough. One of the cutest things about greyhounds is that every time you look at them, they're in different positions. But if your greyhound's recovering from something or not feeling well or has just found an exceptionally comfy spot, he may not move for hours. And again, you'll have that bacteria culturing away in his bladder like algae in an old swimming pool. This, again, is just a simple matter of awareness. And the solution is just as simple. If you find your greyhound in one position for too long, the best thing to do is to try to get him to stand up, as opposed to trying to shift him or roll him over on your own. Greyhounds are very heavy. Plus, they get kind of resentful sometimes if you try to move them. Food is the best way to get your greyhound to stand up. Call him over to you for a drink. Or it might be a good time to break out a toy, like this treat ball Lily enjoys so much. So, just remember, exercise, stay on schedule, empty that bladder, and change positions. Greyhound Urinary Tract Infection Supplements Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp Day 4 Something smells mighty fishy around here, but it's not this. You'd better watch where you step, because I think somebody did something. What did you do? Piddle puddles. They may be the first and only sign that your dog has a UTI. I'm going to show you how making some simple, natural additions to your dog's daily diet can eliminate the dreaded fish-scented puddle. This is going to save you so much anxiety and money, and save your pet so much misery, you're not going to believe it. So stick around for day four of the Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp. If you want years of better living with your greyhound, and to save big money too, apply your paw to that subscribe button and tap the bell. On other days of our boot camp, we worked on making that nasty UTI bacteria go bye-bye by flushing it out with plenty of water, and by moving around enough so it never gets a chance to settle in and breed. Today, you're going to make your greyhound's urinary system an inhospitable place for that bacteria to even exist with this and these. Every day, give your dog two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of pure cranberry juice, and one cranberry pill. First, let's make sure you pick up the right supplies. It's very easy to grab the wrong product, and then you've spent all that money and time with no results. Be sure to check out the text version of this video over at the Greyhound Home Care website for additional tips and help locating this stuff. The vinegar you want is unfiltered apple cider vinegar. Look for the murky, rust-colored vinegar. You want to look for the kind that looks like this. If you run out, you can use this kind for a day or two. It's acidic enough to help keep the bacteria at bay, but it doesn't contain the good bacteria of the unfiltered apple cider vinegar, which is another weapon in our arsenal for keeping your greyhound UTI free for life. Don't bother with this one, although if you swap ears with it, it's a dandy way to keep ear mites away. Never ever use these. They're made with grapes, which are toxic to dogs, and greyhounds are especially affected by them. I've had great luck with these three apple cider vinegar brands. Bragg's, which is very widely available. Trader Joe's, easy to get if you live near a Trader Joe's. And White House, which I got from Dollar Tree. If you find another brand, you might try it. Some work, some don't. When you find one you like, stock up because this secret is out, and the ones that work are popular and go out of stock often. It's very important to get the right one here. Most of what's sold as cranberry juice is really just a small amount of cranberry juice blended with other juices. They call this, in the fine print, a juice blend. Or sometimes what you'll see actually just has a lot of water and added sugar. They call this a juice drink, or my personal favorite name, the juice cocktail.
There's a good reason for this, aside from the higher profit margin. Pure, unsweetened cranberry juice tastes pretty awful. I get this one for $4 at Trader Joe's. That's the best price I've seen. Don't sweat the price tag too much, though. This 32-ounce bottle at two teaspoons a day will last you about six weeks, and the cost of all of these things put together is a minuscule fraction of what it costs to treat chronic UTIs. So why not use cran apple or cran twist or cran whatever? Because, like the apple cider vinegar, when the juice is diluted, your dog's not getting enough of what he needs to stop the UTIs. Cranberry works, according to WebMD.com, because it has active compounds in it that, instead of getting destroyed by the digestion, actually fight bacteria straight through your dog's entire system. And these compounds are especially effective against E. coli, the bacteria most likely to cause your greyhound's UTIs. They may also contain artificial sweeteners, some of which are toxic to greyhounds. These cranberry supplements will give your greyhound a huge boost of this beneficial fruit. I've tried several different ones and settled on this one, which I get from Amazon. One pill is 500 milligrams of cranberry extract, the equivalent of a staggering 25,000 milligrams of cranberries. You're probably thinking that that's a whole harvester filled with cranberries, but it's really only about 12 cranberries. Greyhounds have a habit of spitting out those cranberry skins, though, so you'll find the pills a lot neater than having red specks strewn all over your house. I got these from BJ's. They're not quite as potent, but they're pretty good in a pinch. In case you're wondering why I give both the juice and the pill, it's because I discovered the juice first. Then I discovered the pills, and I've been kind of hesitant to give up the juice as well. If you give only one or the other, and your Grey has had no further UTIs, please tell me about it in the comments. If you don't already know the easiest, cheapest way to get your greyhound to take a pill, you're in for a revelation. I would think everybody knows about this, but apparently not, or these wouldn't exist. Not that they're bad. I'm sure they're wonderful, but why pay a quarter for each pill pocket and you only get 30 in the bag? It only takes a little peanut butter to get your dog to take a pill. If you're concerned that he might lick the peanut butter off and spit the pill out, you can just coat it more thoroughly, still at a fraction of the cost of a pill pocket. I give Lily just one cranberry pill a day. The easiest way I've found to get these sour juices into a greyhound is to make a blend up ahead of time like this. We'll get into the actual daily dosing in a minute. Pour off half of a 16-ounce bottle of apple cider vinegar into a 16-ounce mason jar. Then simply top off both the bottle and the jar with cranberry juice. The vinegar bottle is the least awkward of these three vessels to pour from, so put the other two away for now. This first bottle will last you about three weeks, and then you can just refill it using the contents of the mason jar. Once you've used that up, hang on to that empty vinegar bottle. Wash it out and put it aside for the next feeding. Remember that half bottle of cranberry juice you have stashed in the back of your fridge? Well, break that out with a fresh pint. Not that pint. A fresh pint of apple cider vinegar and your leftover bottle from the last feeding. You guessed it, you're going to pour half of that new bottle into the old bottle and top both bottles off with the rest of the cranberry juice. Now you have two bottles of our UTI-free juice blend, enough to last another six weeks. So altogether, you get three months out of a quart of each of these liquids. To get this juice into your greyhound, simply add it into his food, along with all that water that we talked about on day two. If you're concerned that he'll reject it, break it in gradually over eight feedings, starting with one teaspoon and increasing by one teaspoon each feeding until he's up to the full dose. Once you're at that point, give your greyhound 20 milliliters, two teaspoons twice a day, or four teaspoons once a day. My favorite way to measure this is with a medicine dosing cup, the kind that comes with cough medicine. Mark the appropriate dose with a Sharpie. It makes it much easier and faster to get the perfect dose. A lot of my Greyhound Home Care fans have Whippets and Italian Greyhounds. For these smaller dogs, I would try half the dose for a Whippet and a quarter dose for the Italian Greyhound. The great thing about these supplements is that being foods, they're very mild, and you don't have to worry about giving a little too much that will make your buddy sick. Likewise, it's very simple to give the cranberry pills to your smaller dog safely. Just buy a lower dosage pill. So getting back to Greyhounds, that's one cranberry pill once a day, and two teaspoons twice a day of the apple cider vinegar cranberry juice blend. Natural, wholesome, inexpensive, and such a simple way to keep your greyhound UTI free for life. And as they say on TV, but wait, 
there's more. Greyhound urinary tract infection, hygiene, bye-bye UTI seven-day boot camp, day five. UTIs are a big problem for greyhounds and many other breeds, but today we're going to get to the bottom of it. Yes, that bottom. I think I've actually managed to find a topic on YouTube that nobody else has made a video about. A little doggy hygiene can go a long way toward helping your greyhound to stay UTI free for life, so stick around for day five of the Bye Bye UTI seven day boot camp. If you want years of better living with your greyhound and to save big money too, apply your paw to that subscribe button and tap the bell. Let's take a look at three ways we can help your greyhound clean up his act. First, Nothing like a little freshening up after doing one's business. It's not unusual for your dog to still be a little messy after he does a number two. But if you leave him dirty, don't worry, he'll be glad to clean himself up. This can cause the dreaded UTI in three ways. Our old friend E. coli and other bacteria can hitch a ride onto your greyhound's tongue and through his digestive system, and any bacteria that survives that ride is pretty tough. Also, greyhounds are not very discriminating about their licking. They like to give a good cleanup to the whole general area. And as doggy logic will dictate, cleanup will begin at the messiest area and go on from there. That means he'll be spreading the bacteria in his uh, number two right to his urinary area, where it can easily make its way to his urinary tract. It also makes his greyhound kisses a little unhealthy for you and your family. And we're all familiar with the greyhound breath mint, otherwise known as licking your rug. Finally, it can upset his stomach, triggering diarrhea, which is always a bacteria fest. Now you'll have even more UTI-causing bacteria flooding the zone. All that yucky stuff can be avoided simply by giving your hound a quick wipe just before you pick up his doodles. Have a baby wipe in the bag ready to go. Grab the wipe from the outside of the bag. Invert the bag over your hand. Lift up your pup's tail, and this part is critical, always wipe the butt last. If your dog's a boy, wipe the underside of his tail, then any surrounding fur that looks soiled, and then his butt. If your dog's a girl, carefully wipe any droppings from around her urethra, very carefully making very sure not to push it into her urinary tract. Then wipe the underside of her tail, any surrounding fur that looks soiled, and then her butt. Sometimes that used wipe can be helpful in cleaning up the ground as well. And in case you're wondering if I feel embarrassed if anyone passes by while I'm wiping my dog's backside, the answer is of course I do. But it truly does keep my dog healthier, so I'm okay with that. I think they're just glad to see somebody who picks up after her dog. The second area where you can fight bacteria which could find its way into your greyhound's urinary tract is in his bedding. Doing a load of dog laundry once a week keeps your dog's bedding clean and comfortable. Dogs love fresh clean blankets warm from the dryer. You can start with whatever laundry detergent you normally use. I've used many different brands throughout the years depending on the needs of my family and all have worked beautifully on dog laundry. Currently, because my son works on cars all day, I use Persil, which is a heavy-duty deodorizing detergent. If Lily gets sick or otherwise soils her bedding, I'll wash that with a free and clear type of detergent and add a laundry sanitizing product. I'll have more laundry tips for you tomorrow on day six. You'll be amazed at how much cleaner your dog and your home smell from just this one simple change. As if greyhounds aren't cuddly enough, wait till you have one that smells like clean laundry. A third way to lessen your greyhound's exposure to nasty UTI-causing bacteria is to brush his teeth. This will improve your dog's health overall, saving you huge money at the vet's office. Our first greyhound, Peaches, had awful teeth. We brushed them every week and still had to put her through the trauma of annual dental cleanings. These were expensive, scary, and painful. And with greyhounds, there's always the concern that they're going to react poorly to the anesthesia. We finally hit a point where we told the vet to be very aggressive and thorough in Peach's next dental treatment. He was, and after a tough recovery, we followed through by brushing her teeth every day. After that, she never needed another dental treatment. Her teeth passed every annual checkup with flying colors, her digestive problems cleared up, and her health actually improved every year for the rest of her life. And guess what else happened to Miss Peaches? No more UTIs. If you've never brushed your dog's teeth, you both can adjust to it gradually. For the first session, wet a new children's toothbrush and just brush his big front teeth, then give him a little treat. 
Add a few more teeth to the brushing every day until you're both comfortable with brushing. Then you can try it with toothpaste. Make sure the toothpaste doesn't contain xylitol, which is toxic to greyhounds, and just use a little bit, smaller than the size of a pea. So, did I forget any ways to help your dirty dog clean up his act? Let's see. Clean rump. Clean laundry. Clean teeth. I'll bet you never thought there was so much you could do to make your greyhound happier, healthier, and UTI free for life. If you'd like to see a question and answer follow-up video packed with more helpful information on dog UTIs, please add your question in the comments below. Greyhound urinary tract infection, accidents, bye-bye UTI seven-day boot camp day six. If your greyhound has just left a UTI-induced puddle on your floor or your couch, you may be experiencing a range of feelings. When your greyhound has a UTI, he can make a puddle on your floor that's tricky to remove. That concentrated urine has a high level of bacteria, a high pH, often contains blood, and has a distinctive stressed dog smell to it, which could invite him or your other pets to make further messes there. So stick around for a quick primer on how to get that mess cleaned up and disinfected on day six of the Bye Bye UTI seven day boot camp. Better living with your greyhound doesn't have to cost a paw and a leg. Greyhound Home Care is here to show you how, so apply your snoot to that subscribe button and tap the bell. Here's a quick overview of the steps for cleaning up those nasty UTI stains. Don't wait. Mark the area. Blot with paper towels. Spray with cleaner. Remove the stain. And spray with Lysol or other disinfectant. Number one, don't wait. The first and most important thing to do after your dog has had an accident on the floor is to drop everything and begin cleaning immediately. The less time it has to soak in, the better chance you have of salvaging your floor and your furnishings. Number two, mark the area. Use masking tape to mark the perimeter of the stain or stains. I know this seems like an odd thing to do at first, but as you start to remove the stain, it's really easy to lose track of exactly where it was and you can end up painstakingly cleaning a much larger area. Three, blot with paper towels. Grab the entire roll and get to work. Stepping on layers of paper towels works very well. Tread carefully though, there's a fine line between blotting it up and grinding it in. Be sure you don't miss any splatters or spots. As the towels begin to come up clean, you can step harder, increasing pressure until you're sure you've gotten it all. A roll of these heavy duty paper towels, known as shop towels, are great to have tucked away for just such an emergency. I recommend strongly against using any kind of reusable washable cloth. You're not dealing with ordinary urine here. Remember, your dog has a UTI because his system has been overloaded with bacteria, yeast, or virus. Not exactly the kind of thing you want swirling around the washer with your hand towels or your dainty garments. Through the natural course of life with our pets, we're exposed to plenty of germs, which is actually the key to building our healthy immune systems. But it's important to use discretion too. If you insist on washable cloths, first, soak them in a bucket with plenty of soapy water or disinfectant cleaner. Rinse well and place into your washer. Flush that disinfectant water that you used for the soaking or dispose it outside. Then run your washer using a laundry sanitizer and a strong detergent. Number four, spray with cleaner. Even if you're going to use a rug shampooer, spray the spot with a cleaner. It'll get to work breaking up the stain and making it easier to remove. Stay right here for our easy how-to on making your own gentle natural cleaner for just pennies. But there are many excellent stain removers on the market, including pet-friendly natural ones. You might choose an enzymatic spray, as those break down the scent compounds in the urine so that they turn into gases which will dissipate into the air. Do not use baking soda. Although I can't argue with its deodorizing qualities, it tends to leave a white residue behind and can seriously clog up your vacuum cleaner or your rug shampooer. There are other ways to deodorize your carpet, which we'll be getting into here. Here's how to make the gentle cleaner that I now use every day all over my house. I learned how to make this as a pet stain cleaner, and I liked it so much that I'm now never without it. In addition to being the best thing i found for removing pet stains from rugs and laundry, it has the bonus of not giving me a headache when I use it, like chemical-based cleaners usually do. What's really in a good cleaner, and can we replicate this at home? Well, let's see. You'll want a soap to break up the stain. Hands down, the best cleaning soap is Dawn Original Formula Dish Detergent. White vinegar will help neutralize the stain. Peroxide has a bubbling action that will oxidize the urine and help bring it to the surface. Essential oils are, well, essential. 
It looks like a small bottle for the money, but they're not expensive when you consider that essential oil is measured out by drops. Different oils have different functions. For cleaning UTI stains, we're going to use orange to further break up the stain and rosemary to neutralize the odor. Coming up, we're going to make a formula for your rug shampoo or two, which will contain lavender, a natural sanitizer, and peppermint, which will freshen your carpet and discourage your dog from returning to the scene of the crime. First, put two and a half cups of water into a clean one quart spray bottle. Then add the following, one tablespoon of Dawn, one tablespoon of peroxide, and two tablespoons of vinegar. Then add a few drops each of orange essential oil and rosemary essential oil. Using a cup, Top off the bottle with water. If you try to top it off by running it under the faucet, it's going to foam up, and those essential oils that you just added could end up down the drain. Screw on the spray head top, and you're ready to clean. Because there's peroxide in this spray, test it on a remote corner of your rug. Peroxide will fade some fibers. The peroxide in this cleaner, though, is so diluted that it's never faded any of my rugs. It did, however, fade the black paw print pattern on a flannel sheet once when I used it as a laundry poo treatment. I did think once that it faded an old rug that my dog had trashed, but to be honest, I think it just super cleaned that one spot and highlighted how far gone the rest of the rug was. Getting back to that nasty UTI stain, spray it carefully with your cleaner. You want to use just the right amount here, enough to treat the stain, but not so much that you're spreading the mess outward and down through the pad and the floor. And give the spray about 10 minutes to work while you gather what you need for the next step. Number 5. Remove the stain. This is the hardest and most time-consuming part. If you're going to have both pets and rugs, buy a carpet cleaning machine. Really, do yourself a favor. These machines work this way. They wet down the spot with your choice of cleaner. The cleaner dissolves your carpet stain, and the powerful suction of the machine vacuums the mess into a holding tank. Afterwards, you just empty the tank, and I like to take the whole thing outside and spray it clean with the garden hose. Are you scratching your head because I just told you you need to clean your cleaner? Well, your machine won't last long if it's not cleaned thoroughly right after each use because the mess just dries on it. You see, these machines are stain busters, not vacuum cleaners, so you need to avoid letting them get clogged with pet hair. I know that sounds odd, but I went through quite a few machines before I figured that out. It's one thing if you're just going to clean one area of your rug, but if you decide to clean an entire rug, always use your regular vacuum first to remove the hair, dust, and dander. There are three types of carpet cleaning machines handheld, upright, and upright with hand tools. Whichever one you buy, make sure it's well rated for performance, suction, and not leaking. More expensive ones have better motors. These last longer and work harder so you don't have to. This is one instance in which you really do get what you pay for. A desirable feature is for the head of the machine where it contacts the surface that you're cleaning to be made of clear plastic. And that goes for the heads of the attachments as well. When you use the machine, this helps you see the progress of the liquid being sucked up. That way, you know when you've gotten it all out of one area and can move on to the next. The first type look like little handheld vacuum cleaners. These are good on area rugs, couches, chairs, and large dog beds that won't go in the washer. Uprights look like vacuum cleaners. These tend to be more powerful than the handheld variety, but you lose the ability to clean furniture with them. That's why I prefer the upright type that has a hose and attachments. It's the best of both worlds, and they tend to be the better quality machines. That way, you're ready for whatever your dog dishes out, and wherever uh, he dishes it. You can buy a decent one for what it would have cost you to rent one a few times, and that way, it's always there when you need it. Plus, since you own the machine, you have control over what you put into it. Which brings me to our second how-to for today, how to make your own carpet cleaner fluid. It's very similar to the Gentle Cleaner Spray and has the same benefits. Excellent cleaning, sanitizing, and deodorizing without the toxins of commercial cleaners. It contains white vinegar, Castile soap for breaking down the urine, and Dawn for thorough cleaning. For essential oils, use lavender for sanitizing and mint to throw off your greyhound sniffer and discourage him from turning that spot into a public toilet. Fill the water compartment of your machine most of the way and then add a quarter cup of vinegar, one tablespoon of Dawn, one tablespoon of Castile soap, and a few drops each of lavender and peppermint essential oils. Prepare your machine according to the manufacturer's instructions. Get your paper towels out again and give that stain one more good blotting. Then start your machine. I find that hand tools do a more thorough job. It's easier to see what you're doing. Be sure to clean from the outside of the stain first, working your way toward the middle so you don't spread it and make it worse. Typically, the machine or the hand tool has a trigger that you press to release the fluid on your first pass over the stain. 
let go of the trigger and the machine goes into vacuum mode. This is when you should be able to see the now dirty fluid being sucked up into the machine. Keep going over this first little area until no more fluid is coming up. Press the trigger and clean the spot again. Hopefully you'll see clean fluid coming up this time, but if not, you'll know that a third pass is going to be in order. Keep working. Be patient, succeeding in one small area at a time until you've worked your way to the center of the stain. Be sure to move the tool very slowly to draw as much fluid out of the rug as you can. I won't lie to you, this is hard work. In fact, this is the very thing that motivated me to create this video series for you. Cleaning up UTI puddles is the ultimate buzzkill of pet ownership. But with what you've learned this week, you're going to have a lot fewer moments like this. Anyway, once you've covered the entire stain, switch your cleaner to floor mode if you have the type that has both options, and go over that entire area of the rug. This makes the stained area look less obvious. At this point, I hate to say this, but you're going to have to give it the sniff test. You can also test blot it with a clean paper towel. If it still smells, or your paper towel comes out yellow or brown, clean the stain again. But I have good news for your back. This time, simply working back and forth will be fine. Again, draw as much liquid out of the rug as you can. It won't be completely dry to the touch, but you can put a fan on it. This step is especially important during humid weather or in poorly ventilated areas. You certainly don't want mildew setting into your rug after all that work. The same procedure that I've just outlined applies to furniture as well. Now, if you need to remove a stain without using a machine, you can use the same steps right up to where we broke out the machine. At that point, you'll need a scrub brush, on furniture use a softer brush like a toothbrush, a sponge, rags, a bucket of clean water, and your cleaning spray. You can make the same cleaning spray I described earlier, but you want to add to it one teaspoon of Castile soap. Just like when I talked about using the machine, you want to work from the outside in and clean one small section very well at a time. Spray a small section lightly, scrub it lightly and briskly with the scrub brush to finish breaking up the mess, and wipe it up with a damp sponge, rinsing often. A clean dry rag will provide the absorption you need to draw out the rest of the stain. That's right, more blotting. Yes, I know it's tedious, which is why I recommend the machine so strongly, even if you have to save your pennies for one or sell something out of your garage. You know, that's where one of these can really come in handy. So once you've reached the center of the stain, give it the sniff test and go over it again if needed. When you've finished, lightly clean the three foot radius surrounding the stain to take out any light splashing you may have missed. Number six, spray with Lysol or other disinfecting. Going over the cleaned area with Lysol spray is a quick step but it does so much. It removes any bacteria you may have missed, it deodorizes, it discourages the growth of mildew or other things on the damp rug, and it helps make the spot less interesting to the dog. What if he messes in his bed? Well, I hope for your sake and your wallet that you've taken the precaution of using bedding that cleans up in the laundry. I cannot count the number of adorable dog beds I wasted money on which only lasted until the next illness. Here are pictures of what layers go onto Lily's bed. You might say it's too much trouble or that your dog would dig that up in a New York minute. I had those opinions too, until I had an elderly, somewhat incontinent greyhound. So here's a little secret sauce for you on making up your greyhound's bed for super easy cleanup. In fact, I was just about to do Lily's weekly bed change. So come on in and take a peek. If your greyhound has had a UTI accident on this setup, this is all you need to do to clean it up. Strip off everything that got messed on and place it into a bucket. Throw away the disposable pads, Fill the bucket with warm water and a shot of any cleaner, less oil, laundry detergent, dawn dish soap, wool light, whatever you've got. Let it soak while you put fresh coverings on the dog's bed. Rinse the soiled bedding under running water, in your sink, utility sink, tub, or even hose it down outside. Wring it out and spray with our DIY cleaner, or whatever spray cleaner you have, and then launder it on the heaviest setting you have. This is so much easier than cleaning a rug which is one of the reasons I don't like my dog running around free range when I'm not home. I use a crate in which I put the bedding setup that I just showed you. But an alternative setup that I've seen is a dedicated room with a bare floor and lots of old quilts for the dog to craft a cozy nest for himself. If your greyhound has soiled a dog bed that's all one piece, you can follow the method I just outlined for cleaning soiled furniture, and you might consider running it through your washer if you think your machine can take it. It really depends on how big of a bed we're talking about and the capacity and strength of your washer. Phew, that was a ton of work, but by now, using the techniques you've learned this week, your greyhound should be on his way to improved health so you don't have so many awful times like this one. 
Greyhound Urinary Tract Infection. 10 essential products. Bye Bye UTI 7 Day Boot Camp, Day 7. It's graduation day here at our little boot camp, but we're not going to look back, we're going to look ahead with a few more ideas on how you can keep your Greyhound UTI free for life. Hey, don't cry. Greyhound Home Care is here to lend a paw and show you the way to better living with your pet Greyhound. Why not get off that dog bed, hit the subscribe button, and tap the bell? So what else can you do to help keep your Greyhound UTI free for life? You can check his pee at least once a day to make sure there's no blood. UTIs can come on very quickly. You can educate anyone who helps take care of your dog and make sure they follow the procedures we've outlined in this video series. If you're someone who cares for dogs professionally, you can help keep your furry clients healthy by asking their owners to watch these videos. Be patient. Although natural cures sometimes work right away, just as often, they can take a good six weeks to fully load into your dog's system. And if your dog has had chronic UTIs, it may take even longer. But don't give up. You can win the battle of the bacteria. Greyhounds are sensitive folks. Stress messes with their pH, making them even more prone to UTIs. Watch even more carefully for symptoms during extreme weather, dietary changes, illness, injury, emotional upset, or any other change. Make a detailed note of any changes you make to your dog's diet or routine, and make sure to hand it to your vet on the very next visit so it can become part of his record. That way he's better able to help with any further urinary issues. If all else fails, try a special food. Some dog foods are so high in protein that the kidneys have trouble processing it. Royal Canin has a special UT support formula, as do some other brands. The best thing you can do is take a trip to a pet store with a good variety of foods, read some labels, and pick up a small bag to try. If you decide to try a new food, always break it in gradually or your dog can suffer terrible indigestion, and I'll tell you exactly how you want to do that. The first few days, replace a quarter cup of your dog's regular food with the new food. Increase the replacement by a quarter cup every few days until you've completely changed him over to the new food. If you decide to go back to his old food or try another food, just repeat the process the same way. Here are 10 great UTI fighting products that you can grab right now. Cranberry pills. When I try to buy these locally, I can always tell the preferred brand for UTIs by the empty spot on the store shelf. Bragg's Apple Cider Vinegar. I can't resist this extra large size of apple cider vinegar. Remember to put it in your dog's food as opposed to his water, where he's sure to get the entire dose. The Treat Ball. This is Lily's favorite way to get up and get moving so UTI-causing bacteria is not renting any space in her bladder. Mutt Mitts. My neighbor has an aversion to picking up dog messes and search high and low to find the ultimate pickup bags. Mutt Mitts are constructed with a double liner along the bottom to give your hand that extra layer of protection. A carpet cleaner with upright tools. Since the dreaded puddle is often your first clue that there's even a problem, you want to spend your time helping your dog, not slaving over your rug. I love this type of cleaner because it does it all. It'll power out a nasty stain on the rug, mattress, or furniture, and you can use it to freshen up every carpet in your home. If you only have small rugs, however, you might prefer the small handheld type of cleaner. A crate. It's an easily cleanable place for your dog to hang out while you try to get your rug cleaned up or until his UTI accidents are under control. A word of warning though, don't save the crate until he's just had an accident. Using a crate requires training ahead of time so your dog sees it as a cozy den, not a punitive doggy jail. Shop towels. These extra heavy duty paper towels will make your cleanup much faster and do a more thorough job than ordinary paper towels from the supermarket. Enzyme Cleaner. In case you decide you'd prefer to buy a ready-made enzymatic cleaner, this one is highly rated. Just spray it on the stain after you've blotted it up with the shop towels, and it'll start breaking up the stain while you're getting out the carpet cleaning machine. Large Pads. Now this is the type meant for humans. Don't get puppy pads because puppy pads contain a pheromone that attracts dogs to actually want to pee on them. Until you can resolve your dog's UTI, he may let go in his bed or even dribble a little bit in his sleep. This can be a symptom too. These extra large disposable incontinence pads can really save you a lot of work and save your dog's expensive bed. You can layer them under a fitted sheet or just slide one right under your dog. A feeding stand with stainless bowls. Not only with this set do you get two nice hygienic stainless steel bowls, you also get a raised stand for your tall greyhound's comfort. 
Being able to drink from a comfortable height will help encourage your greyhound to get enough to drink. Have I missed anything? Leave me a question in the comments. If I get enough questions, I'll do a follow-up Q&A video as a companion to this series. Have you been successful in improving your Greyhound's health this week? I'd love to hear about that too. Stories of your success with the techniques you've learned here can help encourage others. If you want to see your Sighthound in a Greyhound home care video like this one, just remember to hashtag me whenever you post your buddy on Instagram. Video clips are definitely preferred over photographs, but I'd love to see whatever pictures you have as well. For the text version of this series and its companion shopping guide, go to greyhoundhomecare.com, linked in the description, or click here to enjoy another Greyhound stuffed info-packed video. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the Greyhound Home Care channel.